Today, uh, I want to tell you why I think uh, wood is not only the very traditional uh, building material, but also the material of the future. Uh, in my research, I'm motivated uh, uh, by some of the social uh, challenges that we are facing today. Uh, one of them is, of course, the limited natural resources. Uh, water is one thing, but also a crude oil is uh, limited. It's used both for energy and uh, for a lot of materials, uh, plastics, but also a lot of our clothes that we are wearing today are synthetic made from crude oil. So I think we could use uh, natural materials more here. And the, these uh, materials, these plastics, uh, they have the problem that it's very difficult to get rid of them when, they, when you don't want to use them anymore. You can burn them, that's fine, but uh, otherwise uh, they do not decompose in the nat nature. So there's a lot of problem with plastic pollution. Uh, a more local problem here in Finland is the bad indoor air quality. And I think there also we can maybe find some solutions with uh, using more wood. And uh, then I'm also uh, interested in not using very toxic chemicals, so also uh, developing more natural uh, things. So, can materials from the trees save the world? Well, we're not quite there yet, uh, but I think we can do a lot of good things uh, with a more clever uh, use of wood and uh, materials and uh, polymers we can get out of wood. So we have a traditional use of wood, you can do, you can do constructions, you can do uh, furniture and paper, of course. But there's a lot of other things you can get out of wood also. Uh, for example, the cellulose fibers and the cellulose nanofibers, uh, they can be used to replace metals and plastics. You can make very uh, lightweight, strong composites with using these natural materials. Um, and there you can save not only using renewable materials, but you can also save energy because they are lightweight. And uh, using more wood in buildings uh, is also a good thing. Uh, what I'm interested in, uh, you can get different kind of chemicals uh, out of plants, or plants also. And what I'm interested in uh, is, uh, for example, developing a lignin-based uh, adhesives for wood, so we could uh, replace the toxic uh, formaldehydes that are used currently. And uh, nanocellulose can even be used uh, for biomedical applications for tissue engineering. Uh, I'm talking about wood because we are in Finland, I think uh, there's a lot of wood here, but you don't need to uh, cut down the rainforest to get these materials. You can also use uh, waste plant materials. Cellulose is fine in uh, on all plants you can use. So there's a very almost unlimited resource of these uh, materials. But uh, how do we get from the tree to these uh, really cool materials? Uh, I will get a, give you a very uh, simplified version of it. Of course, how to get to, uh, timber for building is easy. Uh, if you want to make uh, paper, for example, you start by uh, cutting wood chips and then you uh, cook them and they lignify them uh, to get the individual cellulose fibers. Now we are in the micrometer scale, uh, so you can, they are about uh, 30 microns thick. So you, like you're here, you can, uh, you can see them by the naked eye and you can make uh, composites uh, and uh, paper out of them. If you take this one fiber and you uh, divide it into thousand, thousand times, you get what's called nanocellulose or cellulose nanofibrous. And then you can do uh, this, you can't see anymore with your eyes, so you can make it uh, like a plastic like thing, so you can make very strong nano, nano composites, transparent uh, they are displays that you can print on. But what's also interesting is that cellulose is not the only interesting polymer. Uh, in the wood. Uh, you take, uh, usually you take away the lignin, you don't want it, it uh, uh, smells bad, it's uh, very colored, and uh, it's mainly used for burning, but it can also be used for interesting materials. Uh, these polymers that you can get from plant materials, they are uh, generally called lignocellulosis, and that's uh, to show that it's, okay. it's cellulose, it's lignin, and hemicellulose. And in my research, as Herbert nicely told it, I want to do uh, high value added materials 
out of these uh, these polymers, and I try my I try to develop these materials by looking at the surface and modifying the surface. And why I do this is because uh, you can really affect the uh, material properties by just uh, changing the surface. So you can, by surface modification, you can either decide whether a droplet of water will stay as a droplet or will spread on a, on a surface. And more importantly, you can also affect uh, the interactions, whether uh, some fibers uh, will, in a composite, will have a good attraction to the matrix or not. And I do quite a broad research, so ranging from these uh, interactions between the living cells and uh, hydrogels to modifying uh, wood surfaces. I will only have time to go through a couple of examples today. We start with the uh, leaving nanoparticles. So the motivation for this research uh, was that uh, lignin is underutilized, and that's because, uh, well, it's because it's smelly and uh, has a color, but it's also because it's difficult to, to dissolve and disperse, and it's quite heterogeneous. Uh, our idea was that if we can make uh, ac an aqueous dispersion of a more well-defined uh, uh, spherical nanoparticles or colloidal particles, and we can modify the surface of this, then it would be much easier to utilize and we could overcome some of these problems. And we did this by dissolving uh, lignin into an organic solvent, tetrahydrofluoran in this case, and then we added a non-solvent, pure water. And when the lignin comes into this uh, non-solvent, it spontaneously uh, self-assembles into spherical particles. And they are very stable. And what's very uh, neat with our uh, finding was that we didn't need any chemical pre-modification of the lignin to be able to do these nanoparticles. Uh, they are electrostatically stabilized. Uh, that means that if they are charged, and in aqueous media they stay uh, well dispersed due to this stop charge. Uh, we can modify their surface. Uh, we have done it with adding a cationic polymer, so we can go from the anionic charged part, uh, particles to cationic particles. And we can uh, absorb many different uh, things, and this polymer we have absorbed uh, proteins to uh, make it uh, more applicable in different applications. Uh, we are continuing this research in different projects, and uh, one thing we are looking at is uh, still fine-tuning the method so it could be scalable uh, to commercial scale and also that the particles would be able to, you can dry them and then you can redisperse them in different media uh, depending on what you want. And also modifying the properties so it's more suitable for the different uh, applications. Uh, this was one example. The other thing I want to talk to you today about is uh, uh, sustainable wood and textile uh, surface modification. Uh, the motivation, if we start with the wood, the motivation for the research uh, is first we're saving the environment by the increasing use of wood. Uh, there mm -hmm. it's because the wood is renewable. Uh, then we are saving energy by the use of wood. This might be not totally uh, easy to understand, but the idea here is that uh, uh, wood is uh, hygroscopic, it can uh, uh, take up and release moisture, so it can buffer the uh, changes in indoor air, and this makes it more comfortable, so you can actually uh, decrease maybe the heating one degree, or also decrease the cooling uh, by one degree, and with this you can actually save a lot of energy. Uh, then uh, uh, you might be able to enhance the health and comfort of the inhabitants by using more wood in the indoor. Uh, and that is because uh, it's more comfortable when you don't, uh, uh, when you are buffering this moisture, changes in moisture. There are of course some challenges, uh, maybe durability, fire safety and water resistance. At least uh, people believe that uh, uh, there will be a lot of mold problems with the wood. Actually, I think uh, there's not that as much as one thing. But anyway, you might want it more to be more easy to clean so that the water wouldn't uh, absorb into the wood. 
So to modify these things, you need to understand and control the surface properties. And that's uh, what I like to do. Uh, our approach was uh, inspired by nature. Uh, if you have seen a lot to see, um, you can see, look at the water, it uh, forms nice spherical droplets on the leaf. It doesn't spread at all. And that's uh, because it has low surface energy, so it's hydrophobic. But it's not enough with the low surface energy. Uh, you also need, if you look with a microscope on this uh, uh, leaf, you will see that it has a hierarchical uh, difference in uh, roughness. So you need both the roughness and the uh, low surface energy. And if on unmodified wood, as I told you, it's uh, excellent uh, moisture buffering, but uh, the water will spread on the surface and it might uh, go into the surface after a while. If you, a lot of traditional modifications, lacquer for example, it's totally sealing the surface. So yes, it might be hydrophobic, uh, but it's not uh, moisture buffering anymore. So you have kind of uh, got rid of all the good properties of the, of the wood. Uh, but we thought that if we are adding particles, then it's uh, uh, non-continuous, and then the uh, air can uh, pass and the uh, vapor can pass through, but it's still enough to give the hydrophobicity. And indeed, we succeeded with this. Uh, so we were made, able to make a hydrophobic wood surface uh, that is still uh, most buffering by using these micro nanoparticles of natural wax. Then we continued this uh, research uh, by using layer by layer deposition. That's a very simple way of surface modification. Uh, you just alternate the uh, cationic and anionic components <coughs> on the surface. And uh, in the case of wood, as a cationic uh, component, we use uh, zinc oxide because it gives the UV protection. Uh, we did the same principle for the uh, textile modification, and here we used polylysine as a pattern to get it to, to stick better to cellulose. And we continued with the wax particles because they were working well. So here's a video of the modified wood. So you see uh, that's the unmodified part, part where the water spreads a bit. And then on the modified part, uh, it forms quite nice uh, uh, droplets. And if we look at how it uh, rolls, we can see that on the unmodified one, the water sticks, uh, while on the modified one, the ro water quickly rolls off. So we can uh, think that if we have walls of this uh, uh, material in the bathroom, for example, the, the water will very quickly roll off and then it can dry out. So we were able to combine this super hydrophobicity, which makes the surface easy to clean, uh, durable. I think it makes it also less prone to fungal growth because fungi, fungi needs the, the water to grow. And then we uh, combined this with excellent moisture buffering, which gave the comfort. And uh, the UV protection, it wasn't great, but we got some UV protection with this modification. And we did the same for the textiles. Uh, and here the motivation is that we want most textile, most uh, functional textiles are synthetic. Uh, uh, the cotton, for example, is very nice to wear, uh, but it absorbs a lot of water, and uh, it's uh, so it's not nice to use when you go running. Uh, so we wanted to increase the use of these uh, natural textiles, uh, but we wanted to modify it with an, in a natural way. Also, if you use some of uh, these uh, textile sprays or shoe sprays to make them more uh, hydrophobic, uh, they smell badly, so they are not very uh, healthy. And there are a lot of uh, silver nanoparticles put into some of uh, socks to, so that uh, they would be antibacterial. Um, I would like to use natural uh, means to get the same properties. So we tested, as a first test, we had just cotton sheet, which absorbs a lot of water. And then we used uh, this layer by layer deposition, we used platinum polylysin and wax. And indeed, you can see, we got the, you see the wax particles, and you see here is a, a water droplet on the surface. So we got really, really super hydrophobic textile with a quite very simple approach. So to conclude, I think there's a great potential uh, 
for both wood and lignocellulosic. And even with this simple and sustainable approach, we could get uh, modified and get interesting properties. But I think it's uh, important to control the surface properties. And with this, I want to thank my group for all their good work and some and uh, all the uh, funding agencies. And thank you for your attention.